As a creative designer, product poster is part of the project I like to do. Tunji again from Caesar Graphics, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to create aesthetic product poster. The goal here is to create a poster that depicts discovery. If you need the exercise file for this tutorial, simply make use of the link in the description section of this video. So let's start the tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to create a new document now and I'm going to click on file. I'm going to say new, which is going to be 720. Height is going to be 900. And my resolution to be 72. And um, my color mode is going to be RGB. Then I'm going to leave every other settings the way they are. Now, for those of you wondering, why do we have these settings for the project? So the reason why I'm using this frame size is because I'm planning to post this on instagram so i'm using the instagram portrait frame size here right so i'm going to click on the create drag the image of my kid here and, and and i'm going to drag and drop the image of my snow mountain i'm going to position this below the layer of the cave i'm going to use the free transform to scale this big and i'm going to hit the enter key then i'm going to drag and drop the image of my rock here and i'm going to reduce the saturation of the project because this the color on the project is too much for me so i'm going to use hue saturation so i'm going to drag this and drop above all the layers and dial down the saturation I'm going to create a new layer so i'm going to hold down alt and click on the new layer icon then i'm going to name this layer black then i'm going to hit the enter key so i'm going to increase my brush size zoom out a bit with control and space bar then drag and i'm going to hold down alt and pick a color from this side of my project and just gently apply this here like so now the reason why you know, I can control the strength of my brushes because my flow here is set to 30. So I would advise you change your flow to 30 so as to be able to control the strength of your brush. So then I'm going to just zoom out again and gently apply that here like so. And I'm going to do that here again. So then I'm going to drag the image of my rock here because we need to create the highest effect. So for those of you that don't know how to convert rock image to ice i'm going to be teaching you how to achieve that here so i'm going to drag this down a bit and i'm going to position this here and i'm going to move this down a bit like so all right so then i'm going to uh, right click on the layer of the rock and restorize this because the layer is a is a smart object so we need to restorize this so as to be able to uh, apply the effect that we want to apply to it so i'm going to hit ctrl i on my keyboard here i'm going to go to my adjustment tab here so if you don't if you can't find the adjustment tab simply go to windows and activate it here so i'm going to select levels and i'm going to select i'm going to click on the clip icon because i only want this to affect the layer of the rock all right so i'm going to move from this side up like so now you see we're beginning to see the block effect so i'm going to just move this here now block always have this darker part on them so we need to achieve that so to do that i'm going to move from this side in like so to have this you know dark part on uh, my rock image or the highest image all right so i can even move this down to this side a bit and then we said for this we can move from here to here just to increase the brightness a bit like so let's just move this here now this is good now this is beautiful all right then i'm gonna drag and drop the image of my can here i'm gonna drag that and drop here then i'm gonna scale this down and rotate it this way it should go down a bit again because let's just see if it's taking more space here so i'm gonna just move this down and um let's just move this down also okay move this here and so i'm so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna crop this um highs out from the can drink so to do that i'm going to just reduce all right the opacity a bit okay then i'm going to hold on control and click 
on the thumbnail of the rock to create a marquee shape of that um heights all right let's call it eyes there's no more rock it's height now okay so then what i'm going to do now is i'm going to select the lasso tool and then i'm going to select the uh polygonal lasso tool here and i'll hold on alt because we need to take you know this out from this side of our project so i'm going to just hold on alt and just take this out from here like so all right so we need to just take it out from here You know what? Let's just stop right here. Let's take it up here. All right. Now let's see what we have now. So then, if I increase the opacity of the can drink and add a layer mask to this, we should have this. So what I'm going to do now is to reverse the mask by holding down Control and I, and then we have the mask reversed. All right. Now we are having this um, hue saturation on the can, which is not you know really okay at all because it's really dulling the look of our can drink here so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hold down control and click on the thumbnail of the can and then go to the um, hue saturation layer mask and hold down alt and backspace because i'm trying to apply the color of my foreground here so to apply the color of your foreground the shortcut to do that is or backspace so black is going to delete the um hue saturation from the selected area which is where we have the marquee selection all right then i'm going to hit ctrl d to deselect and then we have this like the way i want it so then i'm going to um zoom in because since this is an ice it's better we make this side of our can more brighter so i'm going to activate levels here and just increase the brightness of my level and then i'm going to hit ctrl i to reverse the uh, the mask and then i'm going to make sure that i'm on my brush tab here because i need to select a soft round brush so we need to be on our brush too all right then make sure you're on the soft round brush and i'm going to reduce my brush size now make sure your flow is still set to 30 like the way i have mine here all right so I'm going to apply the color of my foreground here, but my foreground here is set to black, so we need to switch to white. So I'm going to click here to switch to white because if you don't switch to white, um, your brush is not going to make any effect on the layer mask. All right, so then I'm going to just gently apply that here. Now you see, as I'm applying the brush to the layer, we're beginning to have this, you know, highlight look on our project, which is exactly what I'm trying to achieve here. Okay, so then uh, let's see. This is beautiful. All right, so let's add depth to the can drink so to do that i'm going to select the cover adjustment here and just select the clip icon and then do the s curve on the can now doing this you need to be careful don't over apply it because over applying it is going to affect the look of the can all right so then we need to add hue saturation to you know saturate to we need to increase the saturation of the can so then i'm going to select the curve adjustment uh, um, layer here and i'm going to select hue saturation and click on the clip icon because i only want this to affect the layer of the can so then i'm going to increase the saturation like so all right now this is looking uh more like it all right so the next thing we're going to do now is to create a smoke effect so to do that make sure that you your foreground is set to black and white so i'm going to click on this icon here to um convert my color to black and white just in case your foreground and background here is not set to black and white so then i'm going to um create a new layer all right then i'm going to go to filter here and select um render v on render and select cloud all right so then i'm going to change my blend mode here to strain then i'm going to activate the free transform on that layer and just scale it down all right we need to scale it down and I'm going to rotate it this way, and this should be here. All right, this should be here, and I'm going to hit the Enter key. All right, I'm going to hit the Enter key on it, and then I'm going to activate levels. All right, because we need to make the um, highlighted part on our smoke layer more stronger. So I'm going to call this smoke, or let's just call it high smoke. All right, it should be high smoke. Okay, this is good. Then I'm going to activate levels by holding down Ctrl and L for Windows users and Command L for Mac users. All right, then I'm going to 
I'll move this to this side from this side to this side here and move this to this side here. You see, we're beginning to see just and then the um, shadow part of our smoke layer is going off. And then I'm going to select the OK button. Then we need to add a layer mask to this because if you look at the edges of our layer here, it's looking too razor sharp. So we need to, you know, blend it to the project by selecting the brush tool. Now make sure your foreground here is set to black and I'm going to switch to black here and increase my brush size and then gently apply this here. Now make sure your flow is still set to that. Don't forget. All right. So I'm going to just gently apply that here, right here. So you now you see we're beginning to make this look like it's real smoke. I'll just apply that here. And just apply it here. So this is beautiful. Then I'm going to make a copy of this by dragging and dropping on the new layer icon here. And then this can now go up here a bit and go straight to the layer mask of the du uh, duplicated um, smoke layer. And I'm going to select the brush tool again and just gently take it out from here. You can just take it out from here because making it too much on the project is not going to help. So better just like this, okay? And then um, we can even still make a copy of this. And this time, I'm just going to activate the free transform on this and make this smaller. And this should be somewhere here. All right. So um, for this, all right, I think this is covering the um, logo and the name of the brand here. So I'm going to select the brush tool and just gently take it out from here. Like so. I take it out when that's another thing you need to be careful of whenever you're designing a product poster try as much as possible not to cover the name of the brand all right or the name of the product it's not always professional right the other thing i'm going to do now is to um add the, our character here which is captain climber so i'm going to drag that from the exercise file and drag it here i'm going to scale this down and this should be here let just make it smaller all right Let's make it smaller so we're acting like this guy is the one that discovered the drink all right so this is going to be here and click on the clip icon because i only want this to you know affect the layer of my character here so i'm going to move from this side i mean sorry i'm going to move from this side down like so and just so i'm trying to convert this to uh, a silhouette all right so i'm going to move this here like so all right this is beautiful all right now um the next thing i'm going to do is to you know add depth to my background here but we need to take out that hue saturation this hue saturation from our background here so i'm going to select the layer mask of the hue saturation and select the brush tool and make sure your foreground is set to black i'm going to increase my brush size and just gently take it out because this is making our background which is the cloud color doll all right and um i don't think that's okay at all all right, then um, I'm going to add curve adjustment to this. Then I'll drag this down and just move this up here a bit. Just drag this there like yeah, This is beautiful. All right, then the next thing I'm going to do is to add my, you know, light effect so as to give the project more energy. All right, so I'm going to add that here. And then I'm going to make this bigger and position it here and hit the enter key. Then I'm going to change my blend mode to super. All right, then I'm going to position it here and then make this a bit bigger. Enter key like so. So then I'm going to add uh, a block filter to this because that light effect is looking too strong for me. All right, then I'm going to select the OK uh, button. This is OK now. So then I'm going to zoom out. So we need to add depth of field to this project. So I'm going to start with this image here, this rock image here. So I'm going to position the here, position that here and filter. Blur gallery and select field blur. Then for this, I'm gonna make my blur strength 15 and I'm gonna select the OK button. Then I'm gonna make a copy of this again. So I'll make a copy of this. I'm gonna drag and drop on the new layer icon here and activate the free transform. Right click and select flip horizontal. And this should be here. And I'm gonna select the enter key on, on my keyboard. Now I'm gonna double click on the uh, blur gallery under the duplicated rock layer here so i'm going to double click now change the blur strength of this to something more higher than the previous one then i'm going to select the ok button for this i think i need to reduce the blur strength of this so i'm going to double click on it again reduce the blur strength 
to 10 is fine then i'm gonna select the ok button then i'm gonna move this down here a bit to be down here we can even make it a bit bigger by using the free tra the free transform to do that by using free transform to do that all right so i'm gonna hit the x and this is what we have now hold on ctrl shift alt and then e and i'll go to so we need to convert this to smart object all right so i'm gonna convert this to a smart object because it's possible i may not like the color grading so for me not to lose my setting on the project it's better i convert it to camera raw so as to be able to go to camera raw to adjust the you know color to, to my preferred look so i'm going to call this camera raw and hit the enter key so then i go to filter then select camera raw filter here okay so i'm going to start with the basic so for the basic here i'm just going to uh add more um you know sun light effect by adding this to this now you see we're beginning to see that yellow feel on the project so for the exposure i'm going to reduce that a bit because i don't want the project to be too dark and then for my contrast here i need to boost the shadow so i'm going to move this here like so and uh, for my highlight i'll increase that because um i still want to have this high effect looking bright the way i want it so for my shadow i'm going to reduce that a bit because you know i really want to make more focus be on the and um, drink with you know but the character i have here so for the white because of this i'm going to increase this a bit because over increasing it will affect this side of the can so please avoid you know pushing it to the point where you're going to lose the details on the can all right so for my texture here i'm going to increase the texture so as to add contrast to the pixels like so all right then now uh, for my vibrance here i'm increase the vibrance so as to add you know more to boost the colors on the project all right so for my blue here i'll go straight to um color mixer here and under saturation i'll go straight to blue and just increase the strength of my blue to 18 to enhance the strength of my blue on the can drink so then i'll go straight to um details here and just increase the sharpen a bit and close it and then go to effect here and increase the grain all right because the grain is part of what I always use to make my project look, um, you know, nice the way I want it. Okay, so I'm going to reduce the variant in here because I really want more focus to be on this side of the project. And I think Panos 10 is fine and I'm going to select the OK button. All right, so let's see the before and after. So this is the after and this is the before. Now you see the difference is clear, all right? So I'm going to add select all of these because i really want to have that little faded look on my project and you know push this to minus five all right this is beautiful all right so i'm going to add my text now go then i'm going to create a new layer above this because um i need to make this side a bit darker all right this is so as to be able to see the look of um so as to be able to see the logo i'm going to go back to camera because like I said, making the color too heavy is not going to help the project. So I'm going to go straight to basic here and go to vibrance and just reduce this a bit. No, 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 no. Should be minus four. Yeah, and I'm going to select the OK button. All right. So I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I can't wait to see your version. If you have not subscribed, remember to hit the subscribe button and remember to click the post notification bell so you get notified when I post my tutorials share like and comment on this video and i'll see you again in the next one peace